Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody doing today? Um, today we will be looking into Free Code Camp. So I am going to go through it and we learn a whole bunch of stuff, learn a few new things, and maybe. Anybody watching can learn something with me. I do need to do something real quick though. That fixed. little too quiet. Is that better? Why is that? I don't know why this is turned down, but... Okay, um... I'm gonna hide my face for a second. Good keyboard commands are working. So we have today, basic HTML, HTML5. <clears throat> Excuse me, I literally just woke up. I was up pretty early. And then fell back to sleep. I'm awesome like that and woke about about 15 minutes before the stream had to start so good thing we went over doing this yesterday take the chat out here though let's um make that big and we'll put this right next to it wish it could be even smaller Doesn't seem like it can. So we're gonna drop down the, the text over here a little bit. Maybe not quite so much.
All right. Am I back? Where's my face? Is my face here? Looks like my face is here. All right, let's begin. <clears throat> Basic HTML and HTML5. Say hello to HTML elements. Welcome to Freed Code Camp's HTML coding challenges. These will walk you through web development step by step. First, you'll be building. First, you'll start by building a simple web page using HTML. You can edit code in our code editor, uh, which is embedded into this web page. Do you see the code in your code editor that says "Hello"? That's an HTML element. These little guys right here. This is an H1 element. Most HTML elements have an opening. In a closing tag. Opening tags look like this. Closing tags look like this. The only difference between opening and closing tags is that the forward slash after the opening bracket of the closing tag. This guy right here. Each challenge has tests you can run at any time by clicking the run test button. When you pass all tests, you'll be prompted to submit your solution and go to the next coding challenge. To pass the test on this challenge, change your H1 elements text to say hello world. And I believe that this has a keyboard shortcut, so I'm just gonna hit uh, command enter to run the tests. So it looks like We've passed. Submit and go to the next. All right. Basic HTML and HTML5. Headline with the H2 element. Over the next few lessons, we'll build an HTML5 cat photo web app piece by piece. The H2 element you will be adding in this step will add a level 2 heading to the web page. This element tells the browser about the structure of your website. H1 elements are often used for main headings, while H2 elements are generally used for subheadings. There are also H3, H4, H5, and H6 elements to indicate different levels of subheadings. Add an H2 tag that says cat photo app to, your, to create a second HTML element below your hello world H1 element. So we'll go over here and we'll add some H2s. No f fancy stuff. Um, and this needs to say cat photo app because we love cats and we'll hit uh, command enter on the Mac here to submit everything is green so we've passed the test and if you're on Windows Windows you can hit control enter for these two um, obviously Mac is command and there we go we have our hello world cat photo app p elements are the preferred element for paragraph text on websites p is short for paragraph you can create a paragraph element like this. <clears throat> P on the P tag. Uh, closing P tag. You create a P element below your H2 element and give it the text hello paragraph. So we'll just make this and we can go back and we can say hello paragraph. And there it is, and so we'll run our tests, and we've passed. Free code camp is completely free. Do I want to, um, we're gonna say maybe later. Um, let's see here. Basic HTML and HTML5, fill in the blank with placeholder text. Web developers traditionally use lorem ipsum text as placeholder text. The lorem ipsum text is randomly scraped from a famous passage by Cicero of ancient Rome. Lorem ipsum text has been used as a placeholder text by typesetters since the 16th century and this tradition continues on the web. 
Well, five centuries is long is long enough since we're building a cat photo app. Let's use something called Kitty Ipsum Text. Huh. Replace the text inside your P element. This guy right here. With the first few words of this Kitty Ipsum text. Kitty Ipsum, okay, we're not going to read that. We're going to come over here, highlight it, and we're going to copy it. And we'll delete all that and paste. And there's our new code, and it looks to have everything, so we'll run the tests. And we've passed, so we can submit and continue. Um, uncomment HTML, so we're learning about comments here. Commenting is a way that you can leave comments for other developers within your code without affecting the resulting output that is displayed to the end user. Commenting is also a convenient way to make code inactive without having to delete it entirely. Comments in the HTML, in HTML starts with the opening comment tag and the closing comment tag. Let's see here. It wants us to uncomment our H1, H2, and P elements. So we have the comment wrapping all this. So in here, um, a little quick trick if you're not. Most editors and things, if you hit uh, Control X or Command X on the line without having to select, it will cut the whole line. Not all editors do this, but if yours does, that's that's great. Takes out a step. Um, so now we look to be good. Everything's showing up again. We'll run the tests. And we've passed. And we'll submit. And go on. Comments out the HTML. Remember that in order to start a comment, you need to use that and to end a comment you need to use this other thing here you'll need to end the comment before your h2 element begins comment out your h1 element and your p element but not your h2 element so right now everything um is commented out and we'll use the same trick as before uh as a developer you'll be using your cut and paste quite often Believe you me. So we'll just control X, command X uh, to cut that line and paste it right here. Um, oh wait, what does it come out? Your comment out your H1. Oh, okay. I, re I misread. So we'll, we have that cut. So what we'll do is we'll actually leave this one down here. And the other thing you can do without selecting this whole line, you can just um hit command or control c and it will copy the whole line so you can see there again just save some steps anything that keeps your hand off the mouse is great in my opinion um so we've commented out our h1 element and our p element element so we'll go ahead and says not to change the order all right basic HTML and HTML5 delete HTML elements our phone doesn't have much vertical space let's remove unnecessary elements so we can start building our cat photo app delete your h1 element so we can simplify our view so um Oddly enough, uh, I actually use the command X as a delete too, because um, it's a little faster. I don't know. Oh, I suppose you can. Okay. So if you can, at least on my Mac here, you can command delete, and it just deletes the line. But that makes you have to kind of stretch your, your pinky over there. Uh, so I will probably continue to use 
um, control or command X for that. Come on, no. Um, so I just wanted us to delete our H1 element and leave the H2 and the P. That looks like we're good there. So we'll submit. Great. Introduction to HTML5 elements. HTML5 introduces more description descriptive html tags these include header footer nav video article section and others these tags make your html easier to read and also help with search engine optimization and accessibility i really wish they didn't say that main html5 tag helps search engines and other developers find the main content of your page no many of the new html5 tags and their benefits are covered in the applied access accessibility section all right so we're going to create a second p element after the existing p element so we'll come down here add another line two lines for just give things some some breathing room and we want the following kitty if some text in there so we need a p tag we'll paste this and we'll make we'll close the p tag okay stop i'm hitting the short button key for save like i'm actually coding even though most of my editors are set to auto save these days just a habit i have not lost Wrap the paragraphs with an opening and closing main tag. So we put our end down there and we'll put our opening up here. And I believe that is everything. Let's scroll down and read the whatever these are. You need two P elements with Kitty Ipsum. Your P element should contain first few words of the provided additional Kitty Ipsum text. Your code should have one main element, which we have right here, which wraps all of this. The opening main tag should come before the first paragraph tag, and the closing should come after the second closing paragraph tag. All right, so we'll submit. We're green and we'll continue. Add images to your website. You can add images to your website by using the image IMG element and point to a specific images URL using the source attribute. An example of this would be right here. Note the image elements are self-clothing, closing, self-loathing. Um, all image elements must have an all attribute must the text inside the in all attribute is used for screen readers to improve accessibility and is displayed if the image fails to load oh, oh you probably give me space huh? if the image is purely decorative using an empty alt attribute is a best practice ideally the alt attribute should not contain special characters unless needed let's add an alt attribute to our image example above Okay, so it's the same code they had above there and they've just added an alt with it says author standing on a beach with two thumbs up let's try to add an image to our website insert an image tag before the h2 element before oh so we'll oh, this is gross to me um but whatever uh image and it's gonna have a source of https uh, bitly fcc relaxing cat <clears throat> alt um alt equals a relaxing cat doesn't give us anything um, just to be consistent we'll wrap uh, 
And then, of course, we need to close that image. All right, let's look at the steps here. Your page should have an image element. Check. Your, images should, your image should have a source attribute that points to the kitten image, and your image element must have an all attribute. All right. And so we'll run the test. We've passed. And now on to uh, linking to external pages with anchor elements. You can use anchor. You can use anchor elements to link to content outside of your web page. Why did they choose to s spell it out? They didn't with the other ones. Right there. Okay. Um, anchor elements need a dest destination web address called an href attribute. They also need anchor text. Here's an example. I'm going to copy that uh, to make adding one later a little easier. Um, then your browser will display the text. This links to freecodecamp.org as the link you can click. And that link will take you to the web address listed here. Create an A element that links to a free catphotoapp.com and has cat photos as its anchor text. Your A element should have the A anchor text of cat photos. You need an A element that links. It doesn't care where. So we'll paste this here. We'll triple. Well, we'll just highlight this. Special characters. Okay. Um, and again. You will. There we go. We'll replace that, and it needs to say cat photos. Um, that's everything. So we'll submit the test. We've get past everything. Um, so we'll continue. Link to internal sections of a page with anchor elements. Ah, anchor elements can also be used to create internal links to jump to different sections within a web page. To create an internal link, you assign the link's href attribute to a hash symbol, plus the value of the, of the ID attribute for that attribute for that element that you want to internally link to, usually further down the page. You then need to add the same ID attribute to the element you are linking to. An ID is an attribute that uniquely describes an element. Below is an example of an internal anchor link and its target element. When users click the contacts link, they'll be taken to the section of the web page with the contacts header element. Change your external link to an internal link by changing the href attribute to hashtag footer. And the text from cat photos to jump to bottom. Again, we don't need to save here. Um, remove the target equal blank attribute. And they didn't really talk about this, but with that on an anchor, um, it will make it open the link in a new tab. So that's pretty popular to use on your web pages. Um, because if you have external links, like to third party resources or whatever, um, if you use the blank, that will keep your page up. And the, the idea is, you know, since it doesn't replace your website, like they may come back to it. Um, they'll see it as a tab. So in short, yeah, it's uh, it's good for marketing stuff. All 
I'm going to hide my face for a few seconds here. Um, so remove that. And then we need to add an ID with the value of footer to the footer element. You don't need the hashtag here. <clears throat> You'll notice here the hashtag is just for the link. So we have our ID of footer. We have our link to the ID of footer. Um, and we'll keep this in mind too because that's kind of how you do CSS stuff later on. So let's run our tests. We've passed. Let's continue. Basic HTML and HTML5. Nest an anchor element within a paragraph. You can nest links within other text elements. Here's um, an example of that. Um, now let's break down the example. Normal text is wrapped in the P element. Next is the anchor element, A, which requires a closing A. Target is an anchor tag attribute that specifies where to open the link and the value blank specifies to open the link in a new tab. href is an anchor tag attribute that contains the URL address of the link. The text link to freecodecamp.org within the anchor element called anchor text will display a link to click. The final output of the example will look like this. Here's a link to freecodecamp.org for you to follow. Now nest your existing A element within a new P element just after the existing main element. So it says nest your existing. So we'll take this line here. See, and that's also nice um, since this is technically only one line and short. Sorry, I'm just playing around here. Um, sad uh yeah anyways we can again just click in here and command or control x depending on your operating system and it wants us so we have it in our our clipboard right so we're gonna go ahead within a new p element so we're gonna create that new p element and want it after the existing main um so we're now we're just gonna paste this link new paragraph should have the text that says view more cat photos where cat photos is a link so we already have it and it says um, cat photos so we need to put view more and so now we have view more cat photos um, and the rest of the text is plain text so we should have everything let's run it we've passed and let's continue Uh, basic HTML and HTML5. Make dead links using the hash symbol. Sometimes you want to add A elements to your website before you know where they'll link. they will link. This is also handy when you're changing behavior of a link using JavaScript, uh, which we'll learn about later. The current value of the href attribute is a link that points to HTTP freecatphotoapp.com replace the href attribute value with a hashtag also known as a hash symbol to create a dead link for example href equals hashtag we'll just go ahead and triple click what we can um nope that's not what we want to do so we just want to do the hashtag um 
And that should be everything. So we'll run the test and we've passed. Let's continue. And we're on to basic HTML and HTML5. Turn an image into a link. You can make elements into links by nesting them within an A element. Nest your image with within an an wow. Nest your image within an A element. Here's an example. Remember to use hashtag as your A elements href property in order to turn it into a dead link. Place the existing image element within an anchor element. So we have our existing, and it wants us to place it within an A. We don't have an A yet. Um, so what I would do here, instead of like writing it out, and uh, do an extra keyboard stuff here to get down there is I would cut this <clears throat> a um, href equals want it to be a dead link um, and then what I would do is, so now we're here and we have this in, oh, it pasted it above. That's not great. So we'll enter and then do it. And it just saves a couple clicks. Um, again, that's only possible because we're able to cut this whole line. Um, and then it wants us to Oh, hey, there we go. Then it wants us to hover over the image to notice that it changes into a cursor, a pointer cursor, clicking pointer cursor. Let's see. So we should have everything and we do hyper combo finish and go to the next challenge. Let's do that. Um, let's see here. We have basic HTML and HTML5. Create a bulleted, unordered list. HTML has a special element for creating unordered lists. Or a bullet point style lists. I was supposed to get water before. Didn't too bad. Um, let's finish this and then I'm going to get some water. Unordered lists start with an opening um, UL, so unordered list uh, element, followed by any number of LI, which is just list items, elements. Finally, unordered lists close with a closing uh, UL tag. Uh, for example, here's a list, it's unordered. So we would get two bullet point items of milk and cheese. As it says here, would create a bullet point style list of milk and cheese. Remove the last two P elements and create an unordered, an unordered list of three things that the cats love at the bottom of the page. Ooh, and so now it's making us put some thought into it instead of just, um, it's all this. They have fancy stuff. That's cool. Um, so we're gonna create a UL. Remove the last two key elements. Um, we'll close it, and we'll make it all flush. We don't really have to do that, but. And then here, what I would do is just copy, paste, paste. We got our three slots. Um, so what are three things that cats love? Uh, sleep, sunlight, and lasagna, if you didn't know. Um, 
awesome. Oh, look, they... <laughs> uh, yeah. Alright, so our next... Our next one here is create an ordered list. Um, and that will put things in order. One, two, three, etc. But I am going to go and get some water, so I will be back shortly. We're back with water. Delicious. Life-sustaining water. Ah, uh, that's good stuff. Ah. Uh. All right, we're back. We're going to learn about creating ordered lists with the help of Free Code Camp here. Oh, man. Oh. So bright out. <clears throat> All right. Create an, create an ordered list. HTML has another special element for creating ordered lists or numbered lists. Ordered lists start with an opening OL element followed by any number of LI elements. Finally, ordered lists close with a OL. An ending OL tag, that is. For example, Garfield and Sylvester. We create a numbered list of Garfield and Sylvester. Create an ordered list of the top three things cat hate, cats hate the most. Um, so I just pasta, uh, pasta. I just pasted uh, the example just to give us a starting point, and I'll add a third item. And then we can just double click the items and start typing to replace our selection. What do you? Cats hate dogs. They hate dogs. That's one. Um, what else? Water. And... Hmm, what else do cats hate? Um... Some hate belly scratches, uh, you know, uh, that's what I'm going to put, just so we can move on. How about that? <clears throat> Alright. Uh, they have Flea Treatment, Thunder, and Other Cats. Okay. <clears throat> um, see, they got lazy with the jokes, too. Alright, that's... Okay, so we're on to basic HTML and HTML5. Create a text field. 
Now let's create a web form. Input elements are a convenient way to get input from your user. You can create a text input like this. Um, they have it right here. Actually, we'll copy it just in case we need to use it. It's always a good habit. Um, to reduce how much you're typing. Note that input elements are self-closing, so we don't have to end them um, with one of these style tags here. Uh, create an input element of the type text below your lists. So see right there, that's all we really need. So it's great, we copied it. Boom. You can see it was down here. You can type stuff in it. Woohoo. Let's go back over here. Um, and there we go. Uh, basic HTML and HTML5. Add placeholder text to a text field. Uh, placeholder text is what is displayed inside your input element before your user has inputted anything. You can create placeholder text like so. Um, so that's our type. Here's our placeholder text. We're going to copy this because it's probably going to have us put it in there. Set the placeholder value of your text input to cap photo URL. Cat photo URL. Let's run the tests. Looks like we're good to go. You can build web forms that actually submit data to a server using nothing more than pure HTML. You can do this by specify, specifying an action on your form element. For example, form action then the URL where you want to submit the form data with an ending form. Nest your text field inside a form element and add the action submit cat photo attribute to the form element. So we're going to, again, how I just like to do it, we'll probably cut this whole thing um, just so later I don't have to move past it. That's like three clicks. Crazy, right? So we have our form. We want it to say action equals submit cat photo. And so then we would be here enter paste and then we can enter form and that should be everything let's submit and we're good to go and you can uh okay uh let's see here basic html and html5 add a submit button to a form let's add a submit button uh, to your form. Clicking this button will send the data from your form to the URL you specified with your form's action attribute. Here's an ex example submit button. So we'll again copy this. Add a button as the last element of your form element um, with a type of submit and submit as its text. So it wants us to put it in the form after the input um, with the type of submit and the text submit as its text. It gives us our little button down here. So when you type stuff and you click it, it will send the data to uh, our action URL. All right. Um, Use HTML5 to require a field. You can require specific form fields so that your user will not be able to submit your form until he or she has filled them out. For example, if you wanted to make a text input field required, you can just add the attribute required within your input element, like this. And we'll copy that. Um, make your text input a required field so that your user can't submit the form without completing this field. Then try to submit the form without inputting any text. See how your HTML5 form notifies you that the HTML, the, 
with it. See how your HTML5 form notifies you that the field is required? Question. Um, and so it wants us to just add required here. Um, and then if we don't type anything here and we try to submit, it will give us a little pop-up. Uh, that's a little different depending on what browser you're using. So that should be everything. Let's run the tests and move on. Basic HTML and HTML5. Create a set of radio buttons. You can use radio buttons for questions where you want to, the user to only give you one answer out of multiple options. Radio buttons are a type of input. Each of your radio buttons can be nested within its own label element. By wrapping an input element inside of a label element, it will automatically associate the radio button input with the label element surrounding it. Which that means is you can click on the text of your label and it will still select that button. So you don't have to do just the button. Um, all related radio buttons should have the same name attribute to create a radio button group. By creating a radio uh, group, selecting any single radio button will automatically desele deselect the other buttons within the same group, ensuring only one answer is provided by the user. Here's an example of a radio button. It is considered best practice to set a for attribute on the label element with a value that matches the val um, that matches the value of the ID attribute of the input element. This allows assistive technologies to create a linked relationship between the label and the child input element. For example, so we have our label here. The label is for indoor. Um, and then this has the ID of indoor. So this label, this text here, um, for this radio element so when we have this we can actually click this text and it will select the radio so it wants us to add a pair of radio buttons to your to our form each nested in its own label element one should have the option of indoor and the other should have the option of outdoor both should share the name attribute of indoor outdoor to create a radio group so it wants us to add this to our form uh, we have the first one here. Um, and then a second one. And this we're going to change to outdoor. This is going to be outdoor. And this name is still indoor outdoor, so that's right. And we'll change this to outdoor. And so we can see that if we click the word here, that works. Um, now we'll take we'll take this and we'll just change the name of the ID. Um, now I could also delete the label around it. You could delete the label around it to do this, but by changing the name, it just kind of acts like the label doesn't work. So you can see now I click indoor and it doesn't work while I, outdoor does. And let's just, I'll go ahead and, so you could just have done this too. And of course, you don't really need an ID um, if you're not using the label. But when when you do that, uh, you have to actually click the button, which is no good. So you should always, always uh, wrap your selects, your checkboxes um, in radios and labels for sure. Um, so let's back up. That should give us, oh, we gotta fix this. Uh, yep, yeah, so we're good now. Um, and we should be able to run our tests and pass, and we did. Great job. All right, so we're on to basic HTML and HTML5. Create a set of checkboxes. Forms commonly use checkboxes for questions that may have more than one answer. What? 
Checkboxes are a type of input. Each of your checkboxes can be nested within its own label element. By wrapping an input element inside of a label element, it will automatically associate the checks checkbox input with the label element surrounding it. All related checkbox inputs should have the same name attribute. It is considered best practice to explicitly define the relationship between a checkbox input and its corresponding label by setting the for attribute on the label element to match the ID attribute of the associated input element. Basically the same thing as we did before. Here's an example of a checkbox. Um, so yeah, the label is exactly the same. We just have our for loving, ID loving. Um, so it says add your form, add to your form a set of three checkboxes. Each checkbox should be nested within its own label element. All three should share the name attribute of personality. So we're going to do this after, um, that and we're actually just gonna, Ooh, we didn't copy this. You see that copy this example, paste it three times. Uh, we can put new lines here. It doesn't really make it so much cleaner. Um, they all have an attribute of personality. Um, so we really don't need to change anything. I mean, the spirit of it is... Is that you... Um, change the labels and stuff too, but I, uh, I don't think we need that to pass. We don't, so. You've disabled whispers. Um, yep. I guess I have. Um, let's see here. Pro evils. Thanks for the follow. All right. So we are on to basic HTML and HTML5 check radio buttons and check boxes by default. How long have I been streaming? Like today or like in general? In total, um, I've been streaming on and off for about a year, and, but not a whole lot. Um, <laughs> All right. you can set a checkbox or radio button to be checked by default using the checked attribute. To do this, just add the word check to the inside of an input element. For example, right here. And it wants us to set the first of your radio buttons and the first of your checkboxes to both be checked by default. So we really only need this. Hey man, uh, thanks for the advice, but I, I really don't, I don't need it, so. Bye. Going into people's channels and telling them what to do is really, uh, you know, not great. So, enjoy. Pro tip, dude. People don't want to be helped unless they ask for help. Learn that, and uh, you've learned a life lesson, my friend.
So it wants us to do the first um, radio and checkbox. So that should be right here. And that just gives us our default. Um, basic HTML and HTML5. Nest many elements within a single div, div element. The div element, also known as a division element, is a general purpose container for other elements. The div element is probably the most commonly used HTML element of all. Just like any other non-self-closing element, you can open a div element with the opening div tag and close it with another line with the closing div tag. Nest your things cats love and things cats hate lists, all within a single div element. Hint, try putting your opening div tag above your things cats love p element and your closing div tag after your closing ol tag, so that both of your lists are within one div. Oh, I see. It's just explaining nesting. Hmm. The real KCW and random duty 101. So clever. Oh, wow. Okay. Bye. Uh, basic HTML and HTML5. Declare the doc type of an HTML document. Challenges so far have covered specific HTML tags and their uses. However, there are a few elements that give overall structure to your page and should be included in every HTML document. At the top of your document, you need to tell the browser which version of HTML your page is using. HTML is an evolving language and is updated regularly. Most major browsers support the latest specification, which is HTML5. However, older web pages may use previous versions of the language. You tell the browser this information by adding a doc type tag on the first line where the dots here part is the version of HTML. For HTML5, you will use doc type HTML. The exclamation mark and uppercase doc type is important, especially for older browsers. The HTML is not case sensitive. Next, the rest of your HTML code needs to be wrapped in HTML tags. The opening HTML goes directly below the doc type HTML line, and the closing HTML line <clears throat> element goes at the end of the page. Here's an example of the page structure. Dude, you need to go get a fucking life, man. For you to sit here, this is why I do it, is to weed out the fucking tryhards. You need to go get a life, dude. Go start your own channel. I don't give a fuck what you fucking think. Period. So, fuck off. See how easy that is for me? Go make some more accounts, and I'll come back, and let's chat some more, okay? Jesus. Fuck, dude. <clears throat> wow. Wow. <laughs> Fucking loser. Uh, man. Anyway, add a doc type tag for the HTML5 to the top of the blank HTML document in the code editor. Under it, 
Add opening and closing HTML tags, which wrap around an H1 element. The heading can include any text. All right, so our code uh, should include a doc type tag. There should be an HTML element. Um, the HTML tag should wrap around one H1 element. So we'll have that. <clears throat> Hope to God this, this guy is not in my fucking discord too. Wow. Why are like guys so fragile? I don't understand. Um, hello. <laughs> so that should be everything that we need. It is tubular. And here we are on to basic HTML and HTML5. Uh, define the head and body of an HTML document. Um, I'm going to go ahead and look at the curriculum. Okay, so this is the last one of the section. So after this, I think I'm going to call it. Uh, you can add another level of organization in your HTML document within the HTML tags with the head and body elements. Any markup with information about your page would go into the head tag. Then any markup with the content of the page, what displays for a user, would go into the body tag. Metadata elements such as link, meta, title, and style typically go inside the HUD element. Here's an example of a page's layout. Um, and we got our example. Edit the markup so there's a head and body in a body. The head element should only include the title and the body element should only include H1 and P. So it wants us to wrap this in head, and then we need our body. And that should be it. So let's run it. Audacious. And that's that's it. That's it. That is it for introduction to basic HTML and HTML5. Um, it is Thursday, so I will not be back until next Monday, where we will continue with basic CSS. Um, That was fun. Way better uh, than what I did yesterday. I will be back later tonight at 8 p.m. for some Clash Royale. And I'm here every day, Monday through Thursday, 1 p.m and 8 p.m. EST.